Starting a business isn't an easy task, especially considering the costs involved in maintaining a physical store, such as rent for a space, employee wages, security, shipping, and storage of goods. All these expenses make online commerce strategies, which don't require large and risky investments, much more attractive. Selling products through social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp is generally the most appealing option for establishing an online business. Not only do they offer a huge reach to potential buyers, but these platforms also don't charge commissions on sales like Amazon or eBay do. However, anyone who has started a business through these platforms knows perfectly well how difficult it can be to manage a business on their own and make it stand out among the thousands of other stores. Can you imagine how great it would be if there were a solution to all these problems? Well, let me tell you, there is. Welcome back to the official PDF Element YouTube channel. My name's Chris, and in today's video, we'll discover how to take your online business to the next level by automating the way your customers place orders, simplifying store management, and helping you project a proactive and professional image to your customers. To succeed in the online business world, it's crucial to understand the competitive landscape and learn from the strategies of leaders like Amazon and eBay. These platforms excel at simplifying the shopping experience, which isn't entirely possible with sales through social media, where customization is limited and customers generally depend on the seller's availability to make their purchases. While a tailored website can solve this problem, creating one isn't an easy task. It requires a great deal of technical knowledge. Therefore, many people opt to enhance their business on social media by utilizing the services of platforms like Wix, Shopify, Squarespace, or WordPress, which offer simplified tools for building websites with automated purchasing functionalities, which can later be synchronized with social media businesses at an affordable cost. The problem is that handling both a website and a social media business at the same time means dealing with increased costs and extra workload. Moreover, many people prefer buying through social media because of the personalized attention they receive in a direct sale. But what if I told you that all these problems could be solved using simple forms? Forms, as we typically understand them, are documents intended to gather specific information in an organized and structured way. While it may seem a bit abstract at first, consider this. Websites utilize forms in a similar fashion. For instance, when you fill out a shopping cart with items or provide your delivery address during online checkout, you're essentially interacting with a digital form. These forms serve the same purpose of collecting data just in a more interactive and user-friendly manner on the web. Considering this, it's worth noting that the PDF format also enables us to generate digital forms. These forms can incorporate interactive fields, facilitating the automation of how our potential customers submit their purchase orders while maintaining the personal and trustworthy feel of a direct sale. Let's just say one day I decide to start an online business through Facebook Marketplace to sell essential oils. So I decide to post an ad on Facebook Marketplace offering my products. Once I receive a message from a customer, I greet them warmly and send them a small PDF document that can be opened using almost any PDF viewer including common web browsers like Microsoft Edge. What you're viewing on the screen mirrors what my potential customers will see upon opening a PDF, a form that I designed in just a few minutes. This form serves as a comprehensive display of my entire product catalog, facilitating interactive discussions with customers and providing clarity on any inquiries they may have regarding my products. Furthermore, with this form, they can effortlessly choose the products they want, specify quantities, payment and shipping preferences, all while seeing the estimated cost of their purchase in real time. Just like in a professional online store. Sounds intriguing, right? Let me show you how to do it. The first step is to add images to create a catalog where my customers can see the products that I sell. You can do this easily by clicking on the Add Image tool among the Edit tab tools or by copying and pasting the images directly. Then you just need to adjust their scale and position to align them. Once the product images are in place, it's time to add labels. You can do this using the Add Text tool, allowing customers to easily identify the product names and even include descriptions to help them understand the differences between the products. The catalogue is really coming together nicely now, isn't it? But there's something crucial I need my customers to be aware of when selecting a product. Each of these products comes in various sizes. For example, for our essential oils, 
Each scent is available in three different sizes, small, medium and large. If I were offering clothing for sale, the same situation would arise, as each customer would require a specific size. However, we can handle this seamlessly with this form. All you need to do is add an image for each of the different available sizes, along with a label describing its individual cost. Now let's start adding interactive fields. A great way to begin is by using radio buttons. Radio buttons allow us to provide multiple options for a single question. What's cool is that even though they typically have a circular shape by default, we can customize them to have a square shape that users can fill in with cross. And place these buttons over the images of the different product sizes. This makes it easy for the users to visually choose the size they want. Keep in mind that to link the options, the fields must have the same name and you have to assign a value to each option. For instance, $3.29 for the 15ml option, $5.19 for the 30ml option, and $8.65 for the 60ml option. Additionally, we can enhance clarity by adding instructions using text boxes. The next step is to include a field that lets users specify the quantity of items they want to buy. For this, we could use text fields and set up some rules like defining a range or maximum character limit. Although this field would fit our needs, since my customers typically buy between three to five items on average, using a drop-down menu might be an even better option. We just need to create an option for each number from zero to 10. We could add more if necessary, and although it might seem like a lot of work, this is something that only needs to be done once, so it's worth it if needed. In this case, these options are good to go. It's pretty cool, right? A drop-down menu makes it easy and intuitive for the customers to select the quantity they desire. Of course, it's important to include clear visual instructions to help users understand how it works. Now it's time to add these fields for all the remaining products in the catalogue. Fortunately, from where we left off, we can simply create copies of the labels and fields we've previously created and just rename the fields. Now that our catalog is ready, let's add a dynamic twist to our form. Let's start by creating an automated field that calculates the total value of the products the customers have chosen. The idea is to mimic the behavior of a website where the customer can preview the total cost of the items in their cart before actually checking out. To achieve this, we will use a text field. Text fields have a feature called Calculate. With this feature, we can automatically fill the field by multiplying two values. We can use this to multiply the quantity the user has chosen by the cost of the selected product. It's a symbol as specifying the two fields to multiply and thus the value of this field will update depending on the quantity and product selected. However, if we did this for all the products in the catalogue, the user would have to sum up these values to know the total of their purchase. But we can create an extra field just like this one that instead of multiplying values, sums up all these values and gives us a total. Now that we have an automated field that calculates the value of the products that the customer has selected, these fields will only distract our customers. Fortunately, we can solve this by hiding them and to avoid users accidentally modifying these subtotal values, we can check the read only option. Now this catalog is much more dynamic, isn't it? But there's something we haven't considered just yet. What if a customer accidentally selects a product? While the user could reset the quantity to zero using the drop-down menu, this won't undo their product selection. To make the process intuitive for our customers, we'll add two additional fields. The first will be a duplicate of the size selection fields, but with a few tweaks. It will have a non-default value to indicate no size selected. 
be pre-checked by default and remain hidden. This ensures that if a customer doesn't choose a size, it defaults to none, but this is just the beginning. The second field we'll add is a push button, which allows users to perform actions. In this case, we want customers to click the button to reset both the quantity and size values to their defaults, none for size and zero for quantity. We'll achieve this by setting the button's action to reset a form and selecting the fields that it will modify. Once more, to make this button intuitive, we'll include an easily recognisable icon. It's pretty cool, don't you think? Now that we've finished our catalogue and explored many of the form features, let's quickly review how the form I designed will collect information about payment method preferences and shipping addresses. As you can see, I used radio buttons for customers to choose their preferred payment method and shipping service, similar to how I handled product sizes. While for other details like addresses, I provided text fields for users to enter their information freely. Keep in mind that text fields can be set to specific formats which is handy for zip codes and phone numbers, ensuring a standardized format for better accuracy. And lastly, there's one more button on my form that I'd like to discuss in detail. This button here does two things. First, it saves any changes you've made to the document. And secondly, it helps customers send their filled out forms to me via email. And believe it or not, it's pretty easy to set up. Just simply open the Properties menu, go to the Actions tab and set up a trigger to execute a menu item when you click on it by selecting the Save As Action. Then you will need to create another trigger that submits the form when the button is clicked. When setting up this trigger, specify the export format as PDF and indicate that you want this document to be sent to your email. And that's all you need to know to start creating your own forms to boost your sales on social media. As an additional little tip, you'll find the page measurements in the bottom left corner of your screen. This comes in handy if you want to design a background for your document using graphic editing software like Photoshop. You can add it using the Add Background tool in the Edit tab. Now let me briefly explain how to manage all your forms you'll get when your customers start shopping. As soon as you start receiving emails from your customers, you'll need to download the documents and store them in the same folder. Next, from the PDF Element home window, you'll open the Batch PDF tool and select the Extract Data feature. This will bring up a window where you can drag and drop the folder where you stored all your customers' forms. Make sure to check the Extract Data from PDF Form Fields box and choose a destination location where a CSV file that will hold all the sales info will be created. Once this is done, you can open the CSV file with Excel or Google Sheets to see all the sales data neatly laid out. For easier reading, you can select the columns and use the Auto Fit column width option. Then we'll need to make some tweaks. For example, hiding the fields that provide unnecessary information and using colors to distinguish between the products. Now let's delve into the collected data. Take a look at all these values. These values correspond to the cost of the products, but as the seller, I prefer to know the product size they chose rather than its price. Those familiar with Excel may have already thought of numerous ways to optimize the spreadsheet to simplify order management, but to keep it simple, you can select the column and replace these costs with the corresponding sizes using the Find and Replace feature. This way, whether you've received 10 orders or 1,000 orders, you'll be able to manage purchase orders, send payment requests, and complete shipping forms required by shipping services to deliver your products in an organized and reliable manner. Forms hold incredible power, 
Unlike conventional sales management services out there, Forms empower you to grow your business without needing complex tech skills, hefty investments, or commissions on every sale. But here's the best part. Today we've covered all the steps from start to finish to make it happen. So what are you waiting for? Why not start today? Go to the official PDF Element website, download PDF Element completely free, and start boosting your business sales. I promise you won't regret it. Thank you for staying with me until the end of this video. If this video was helpful to you, I would appreciate it if you give the video a like and consider subscribing to this channel. I will continue bringing you more videos with many tips and tricks to make your work a lot easier. You can also take a look at the channel where you'll find lots of other videos just like this one. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one.